Today is October 26th, uh, Saturday, uh, 2019. My name is Ted Descaris and this is a 41 car Rio Grande train because it has Rio Grande engines on it and a caboose, five total engines. And again, they're all body mount uh, couplers. The engine has, uh, for example, on both ends, and uh, it has a Campac box, Camarillo Pacific uh, Campac box. It's a 3D printed coupler box that accepts KD907 couplers, lid and springs. And it's a center set coupler. And it replaces, in the case of the pilot on the F USA Trains F3 here, it replaces the dummy coupler or else the, uh, the, uh, the uh, USA Trains proprietary low mount knuckle coupler or the uh, low mount uh, hook, hook and loop couplers. <clears throat> so again, all the cars uh, have uh, KD center set couplers on them. Uh, body mount. And I'm going to run this train now with a different uh, RPO car that it ran with uh, a little while back. It's an Aristocraft, again it's an Aristocraft heavyweight type car. And I'll bring it around here. And that car is the first car coupled behind the uh, three Aristocraft uh, RS3s here. And here we go. Here I'll slow and stop the train here. So this train has, um, or this particular RPO car, it's a Southern Pacific one now, and the one that was on here was a Denver and Rio Grande Western. The Denver and Rio Grande Western car had what I would call a, an early version um, heavyweight car. And uh, it had trucks that uh, did not rely on a, uh, the weight of the car bearing right on the center, like this later version here. And uh, it's basically, these, these three axle trucks, and also the two axle trucks that they offered on these, are offset mounted. So it means that the pivot for it is right over here rather than in the center. And the problem with that is uh, when the car is weighted, uh, it tends to make the side frames or the whole truck tilt when the side frames try to basically equalize somewhat and the, the gaps between the journals and the bottom of the drop equalizers uh, are, became unequal. So there's a solution for that. <laughs> and uh, Greg Amassin actually kind of stumbled on this issue uh, and then I've, I've all, I'm in the process of updating my vignette on Aristocraft three axle trucks uh, to point out what I've done to help mitigate that. But at any rate this is the newer version, the latest version heavyweight car and again it has it has a center ribbed across from one side from the other right in the center on the top of its um, truck bolster here and that allows the weight to bear right on the, on the center and it, the truck therefore doesn't have doesn't have the same issue that the earlier version had. Um, another thing they did was they put a little tab behind these the journal box under the journal box here, so that limits the amount of excursion the suspension has in the downward direction. Not quite sure what that was supposed to accomplish, <clears throat> but that's what they did. And basically, the old version truck relied on the end the end axle suspension. Uh, the center axle on both versions are rigid mounted. The end axles are suspended and the old version relied on the suspension going up and down when there was un unequal track work with the truck more or less being trying to be level although it didn't quite work out that in practice without uh, some mitigating things that both Greg and I have done about that. And, and this version the whole truck is allowed to rock up and down on this fulcrum point in the center rib here. It's still offset mounted, <laughs> uh, but I guess they decided they didn't need as much suspension travel being the whole truck would rock up and down, <laughs> you know, going over irregular track work. <laughs> and so, so that's what they've done and that's the main difference between these two version cars. <laughs> so I'll run this outside and we'll see how it performs on the outdoor layout.
So the train's going on the outdoor park portal now. Coming over the bridge now. It's about 85 degrees outside now in the sun. <laughs> run the train a little faster to make a run for the grade here. So again it's 41 total cars long with the caboose. Don't lose the caboose. Right now I'm at 57% power. Train's passing over itself. Sometimes it tends to slip going up that grade there. But it looks like it made it. Oh, I saw the RPO car kind of lean over there. I'll run the power down to 50% here. Go a little slower. Now here's the RPO car going by. Now the Rio Grande RPO car had tilted over, and I hope this one doesn't fall over coming over this upper part here. Oh, there it tilted, so it didn't perform any different. Now, I weighted these heavyweight cars, including the RPOs of both versions, to from a five to six pounds. <laughs> but it probably could use a little more weight to stop it from tilting. So the different versions as to how Aristocrat treated the trucks uh, looks like it performs the same way. Now normally you wouldn't have this car uh, at this critical point in front of the train. This is just for tests here. Uh, with this much weight on it. Uh, the passenger tr train cars, though heavier, uh, like, these, like this six pound car here, are typically uh, typically lighter in overall weight because there's only about nine cars on the passenger train. Now this car may tip over here if it's like the Rio Grande car. Oh, yeah, so it, it, it did, the same, did the same thing. So this time I ran the engines around to the other end of the train to return it home and put the caboose at the end of the train, which used to be the front. <clears throat> so the caboose is now next to the Southern Pacific Aristocrat Heavyweight RPO car. And the train is going to return, return home after this test. So you can see the uh, USA Trains F3 now is utilizing its front coupler to pull the train uh, with its can pack box. It's a 3D printed uh, resin coupler box. Center set again. So now the Aristocraft, the 3RS3 uh, Rio Grande engines are on the front. And the USA Trains F3 A and B units, Rio Grande units, are on the, the tail now pulling the train. Again, 41 cars long.
I'm running 30% power now coming down the grade and as the cars come down the grade the, the uh, cars will go into compression and tension depending on the, the drag of the curve or the slope so the couplers can go into compression or slack now the load goes around the middle loop here And we can see the engines are a little bit ahead of the tail of the train. That's, that's on the upper level there. There you can hear the cars going into compression. <clears throat> train is returning home. And there you have it.